usually when I talk about this lab in, in the past, uh, I want to take, I'd like to take a step back and, and kind of gauge your understanding of what communication is. So, so we'll, we'll go off completely off, off course for a few minutes and we'll come back to the, the course as such. So, so can somebody tell me what happens? This is your browser on your computer. There is your browser and I type in HTTP colon slash slash some let's let's foo.com. There is no foo.com, but it's there a foo.com. And if I were to do that, what do you think happens from the time you enter this, hit enter to some probably there's a cat that shows up on your screen, right? On your browser. So what happens? The time you click this this is time t equals zero to some time t equals some t something shows up here so what do you think happens from tell me all you know about it yes so it says that this it sends a request to a server but this server is somewhere in the internet right we don't know where it is so this is your internet and somewhere in the internet, there is a machine which responds to the word, to the name foo.com. That's his name. So, in fact, he says that he, this request is sent from here to there. But how does it get there? I mean, it, all I know is that I, I'm sitting on a machine which is not even connected to the wire, wire to the outside world. It has a wireless communication. Maybe this guy is sitting on a machine which is which is a uh, this is my machine on which i'm sitting and has a wireless communication how did this request so-called request go from here all the way to there precisely go to that location to that particular machine yeah Isn't well we're now talking right he says First, it goes to your router. So this is UT. Let's say the small chunk of the world is UT, right? And in that UT space, he, there is a machine. He calls it a router. Let's call this a router. He says that that request is sent to the router saying, hey, can you send this to this location? In fact, what will actually happen behind the scenes is machines don't have names like foo.com and stuff like that. They have an IP address. So we'll, we'll suspend our, that's a whole other can of worms I'm not going to open. For now, let's assume that machines actually have symbolic names like this. They actually don't have. Machines have what are called, which are, machines have two kinds of names. They have a IP address and they have a physical address. It's like I have two, two identities for myself two addresses for myself, if you like. One is my physical address, right? Um, which, which changes based on where I move, right? If I'm here, if I live in Austin, my Austin address is somewhere in South Austin, but I may move to a totally different location. Maybe I live in Colorado, then it, my address is Colorado. But what is one, one identity of mine that doesn't change? My name, there's many people like with the same name. There's a social security number that doesn't change, right? <laughs> and that is my identity. So machines have one identity that doesn't change, which is a physical address that is burnt into your machines, machines um, device, whatever your communication device. That doesn't change, but your address changes. Like the same machine, which is now called foo.com, if let's say it was bought by some other company, that some other company will rename it to something else, but it will still have the same physical address, physical name address. But so there's a mapping from this physical address to the symbolic address that we won't worry about. For now, we will we will say that that's that's uh, you'll take a class in networks and clarify that. But this this thing here that you have needs to go from this link to this locate to this. So the first hop, if you will, is 
the communication between these two guys. Right. So the communication from your machine to the router is your first link to the outside world. Now, what happens to the when it gets to the router? The router says, hey, I need to send this to a machine called foo.com. But how does he know where foo.com is? How does he know who to give it to to get there? What would you do if you were if you were if you got in the car and you have no maps and you have to get to somewhere in New Orleans? You start driving, and what do you do? Let's say first, hopefully you're driving in the right direction. And if you even if you don't, at some point you're gonna stop and ask for direction, right? So that that is exactly what the, how the internet also works. So these routers, this router will say, if I know how to get to foo.com, which means I have a table. In my table, if if this this there's an entry for foo.com, then what it will tell me, it doesn't tell me how to get there in my entire path to get there. All it will tell me is go from here to this, this router, go to R1. Send it to R1 because R1 is known to have a path to get to that destination. Now, what does R1 do? R1 doesn't have a link, direct link to, nobody has a direct link in the internet. Nobody has a direct link to foo.com, right? Let's just start this track. Somewhere on this periphery, some router has a direct link to foo.com, which is the company's router. But all other routers, there are millions of routers in the internet, and, and none of them has a direct link to foo.com. So what do they have? Yes? They just have a table that says, what's my next step to get there? So this guy says, my next step to get there is this router. Maybe R2. Router, this router also has it. They all have a table called a routing table. This routing table will tell them where to go. So maybe it goes to R2, then it goes to R3. R3 goes to some router here, which is which is this company's routers, whose router, and eventually it gets there. Right. So it made this journey one, two, three, four to get there. Which means that all these routers have a table that they're maintaining. That table is not, it doesn't have entries for every machine. Right? So what, what happens, let's say, let's say you have a machine and for example, this RUP has never heard of foo.com. What do you think it would do there? Never heard of foo.com. No, no entry in its table for foo.com. What would, what would it do? Would it just throw up its hands and say, I don't know what foo.com is? Typically, what it does is says, if I don't know anything, I'm going to send it to this router. Right? So it always have a default router it sends it to. So first, it's possible that there was no entry here and it sent it to R1 because he didn't have an entry in his <coughs> routing table. Yeah. So guess what once once he gets in a wind of this machine right with the of this host he will definitely know that oh if he gets a response back he will know that r1 is the way to get to to that point if if he gets back a response and it comes to a different path to him then he knows that r1 is not the way to get to him some other link is the way to get to him right so let's 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 go with this idea so it made all this journey all the way to this machine it came all the way here to this machine and this machine responded back with an answer it said you ask me a question here's the answer to your question which is whatever this page is that i rendered back so it came it goes to this so what what happens now do you think it will follow the same path back? So the question really is what determines the path? We said that the table entry determines the path, right? It's perfectly possible that 
from the time and because because the internet is a very dynamic evolving thing by the time your request came all the way here things have changed in the internet to a point where on the journey back it might actually find a completely different path to get to this get back your message right it's just like traffic i may go from here to some place and on my way up there is one path that is that is desirable on the way back this condition on that path i might take a completely different path and that's exactly how the internet also works it's quite possible that on your way back your message went a completely different path it went from here to here uh, maybe here maybe then back here or maybe even let's let's say he said goes from here to here to here it's perfectly possible maybe ut has multiple routers and all oh, this is everything routed again from here to here back to the end thing that's perfectly possible that that's a different path it takes and and in this entire exercise of communication let's under let's understand what is happening behind the scenes one of the things that I, I realize is there is a link here. This link is a wireless link. In fact, it is it is a what for us, for most of us at UT, for example, this is a what is called a 802.11 link. I'll explain what that is in later. It doesn't matter. It's just an IEEE numbering for it. So we go from there to a router. How is this router connected to the next router? There's a different link, right? There's a wireless link. The second link here is a wired link. This is a completely different IEEE standard and 802. Dot, 802 maybe in just a second um, i don't want to give you numbers that don't make sense but uh, let's call this an ethernet link okay. it's going from here this is a wireless link this is an ethernet link it goes off and possible it's quite possible that one of these links Let's say foo.com is on the other side of the world. Maybe it's in Europe. So one of these links is a transcontinental link, which is probably, let's say, a sonnet link. And that's another protocol, other link. So if we're going on a if we're making this journey from one point to another point, but the link that I'm following is wireless, wired. So this is a trunk line, this is a transcontinental line. Maybe you get out there, maybe there is a little, maybe this is posted on a small island, maybe there's actually a wired, a wireless satellite link somewhere, all kinds of links. So so the key thing to remember is. Any two machines in the internet can have a link between them, a link between them, and this link can be of many kinds. It can, it can be of many different possible, many different possible technologies. In fact, if you take a networks class, you will find out that this, this link between two machines can be one of 20 different possibilities today in the internet. From, from something as simple as Bluetooth to Wi-Fi to Ethernet to FDDI to a cable, cable internet to a DSL to ATM, Sonnet, there's like hundreds of different different standards out there. It could be any one of them simply because not everybody uses the same technology. Okay. So, but at the at their heart, we can think of this link 
they should, if two hosts can need to exchange information, right? They can, they're typically exchanging in information, possibility technology, possible technologies, which follow a protocol. Basically, they follow a protocol. Protocol is a standard. They say if you and I have to talk to each other, we have to agree upon what we exchange. How do bits get between us? How do bytes get between us? How do, do we do we write at what speed do we write? All those are part of the protocol. Protocol, follow a protocol, and the protocol is a set of rules. So set of rules that facilitate unambiguous communication. And there are so many different of sport protocols like this, the simplest The simplest protocol that has that has been with us for the longest amount of uh, longest time is the simplest version of this protocol is the UART protocol. It's used for it's called universal asynchronous receiver receive and transmit. It's by far the oldest protocol. And what is what makes it simple also simple is the fact that it can only be used between two hosts that are directly communicating between each other. Right. So this is a what we call as a point to point communication. 